How's it going? I haven't eaten in almost two days. <laughs> you need to help. You're a sick man. I'm a sick man. Wish we, huh? We'll answer. We'll. Wee! Dude, you fucked it, man. I sat here for like two hours and shit. I think it was 12. Listen to daddy. I want you to take the gun. And I want you to put it in your mouth. And I want you to blow your brains out. No! Blow your brains out! Blow your... This is Disturbing Cinema, a podcast in which we discuss and dissect films considered to be disturbing or have a disturbing reputation. I am JP, one of your three hosts podcasting out of Southwest PA. I am, of course, a podcaster. I make videos on YouTube, and I'm just an all-around horror fan. And joining me tonight, first, let me intro my number one homie, Mood 616 out of BC, Canada. What up? Yeah, yeah. Representing PGBC. Y'all know me. I'm the M double O D to the Z. Yeah. Yeah. Try to follow What's going that on, up. JP? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's up, man? How, how you doing? We're, we're doing something different now, huh? Yeah, man. I'm really, I'm really excited about this. And I have to say, it's very strange. Um, you know, me not talk, talking off the top of the, um, the show. Yeah. I felt I a like- little weird myself. Like I was literally sitting back in my chair with my back actually touching the back of the chair, and I was like, "Oh, this is cool, man." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I I'm not that alpha male. I don't have to be in charge all the time. You know, so I'm you know, this is cool. This is fun. Absolutely. So yeah. uh, one of the things that I wanted to do is uh, because we probably will have a similar audience to the one that is the 22 shots audience, but I'm sure we'll pick up a lot of new people. So go ahead and tell people who you are, what you do and where they can find you. Uh, of course, um, I'm mostly known as moods. Uh, I do throw in the 616 once in a while, but of course that is my YouTube name mood 616. So you can find me over on the YouTube inner waves. Yeah. Check me out on there. Uh, my channels it's 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 a decent size if you've never heard of me <laughs> i hear you host a podcast is that true and yes and i'm getting there i also host a another podcast called the 22 shots of moods and horror of course that would be strange if i didn't since my name is in the title you know that was never planned that was never designed <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you can mostly find me on there my youtube channel of course you can follow me on twitter at mood 616 and instagram mood 616 everything is just mood 616 i make it so easy so yeah, you can find me all over the place. All right. Simple. So uh, then we have the third host here, and I uh, can't forget him. His name is The Horrorphile, a.k.a. Kyle, podcasting out of South Carolina. Yo, yo, yo. What is up, guys? Yeah, so actually upstate South Carolina. Yeah, you always is... correct me on that. I have no idea what the difference is. Honestly <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. That's I was... just confusing. Upstate <laughs> South? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's kind of weird. Like, I always correct people on that because it's where, I don't know. I've grew it's up. like you have some beef with, like, the north the north side of California. Well, so I mean, Carolina. South Carolina is one of those things where everybody that lives here, they either live in upstate, they live in Charleston, like, near the beach, or they live, like, in the middle of South Carolina where Columbia is, like, where the capital is. So, I don't know. Upstate, it's – I live in a town called Anderson, which is uh, pretty much on the border of Georgia. So, so yeah. Yeah, and I also – do have a youtube channel uh my name is the horror file on youtube which on my channel i kind of do similar things to this podcast i have a disturbing movies series i do a video nasty series i just do general reviews on some horror movies uh and also i do have a i do have an instagram as well i actually have two instagrams i have my personal one and i have my horror file one but i'm at the horror file on instagram if you guys want to follow basically only thing on instagram i do with my uh my, at the horror file is i post just random dick posters pics. of movies yeah I, po- I post a bunch of black dick pics of myself um <laughs> no, no like, i actually uh i actually just post movie posters of movies that i watch like if I'm watching a movie and I get bored, I'll just post a poster. So, but other than that, yeah, yeah, check me out. Yeah. So. Otherwise, he's saying he's boring as hell. But exactly. no, no, seriously, Kyle's an <laughs> awesome uh, YouTuber, and honestly, one of the people that I like to pull into podcasting. Me and Moods, we pulled him in because we thought he was a, a decent person and uh, fun to work with, and that's why we came up with this uh, little brainchild, which kind of segues into uh, the next little thing that I want to discuss, and that's actually what we're doing, and this 
this thing is an interesting concept. I think it mainly came from Kyle, actually. It's basically we're going to take one film that is considered to be disturbing by the horror community or horror fans. I'm not saying that it is disturbing. It's just considered to be disturbing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the film. We're going to review the film. And then we're going to discuss and dissect whether it is or it isn't disturbing. And we're going to kind of break down why or why not. Kyle, actually, why did we choose to do this? Because this um, is your idea. Uh-huh. I think the, this kind of, this idea, I've always wanted to, I've always been interested in kind of extreme movies, I guess. Um, he's I'm really just trying to fit in and be like cool and stuff. He's like, <laughs> yeah, oh, he's like a horror hipster. He's like, <laughs> he's like <laughs> oh, you know, like, like, I don't want to do anything lame, like doing reviews from 1981 or 1988 or anything. He's like, I just want to focus on, you know, the disturbing films because that's where all the cool kids are. <laughs> I'm trying out. to be very edgy, as they say, moods. Very, very edgy. So, no, yeah. I, like, I, I enjoy these types of movies. He's like extreme type movies i've always enjoyed them i remember one of the first extreme movies i ever watched which was a long long time ago was uh august underground's mortem which is you know back in the day if you see that when you're like in ninth grade and you're did in you school, start with that one you yeah, just that was you just first, you watch like the middle film in the trilogy movie. Yeah, that was the first movie I ever – extreme movie I ever watched. I never watched the first August Underground. I watched Mortem, which is kind of weird. But I remember it's a watching good start, it. man. You know, if, you, if you're in, semi-interested in, you know, in uh, disturbing films and stuff, that's that's quite the start. You know I what? To, it I, is. I, I'm going to interject here. That was actually my start too, but it wasn't the middle of the trilogy. It was the – the first film I had heard about the August underground films and actually I heard about Mortem. Everybody always said August underground Mortem, August underground Mortem. And yeah. I couldn't find that one online. And I found the uh, regular August underground and I watched that. Uh, but the, before that, the previous most disturbing thing I ever seen was like the devil's rejects. So, I mean, it was really kind of jumping. W- yeah, it was straight jumping into the deep going side. straight into mortem. Like, I mean, I remember whenever I, I was in ninth grade, uh, you know, in high school and I remember looking, going online and dial up days. This was dial up days, guys looking up what the most disturbing movie, you know, what the most disturbing movies out there are. I remember I saw mortem August underground mortem. I went and bought that movie. I ordered it offline. It came, I watched it. I was like, wow, this is pretty fucked. I remember like halfway through the movie. I was just like, cause I mean, I was in ninth grade. I was just kind of like, wow, this is a lot to take in when you haven't seen these type of movies before, especially if that's <laughs> yeah. the first movie. And then I remember seeing cannibal Holocaust shortly after that. I went and bought that and just kind of, just kind of blossomed from there. I've always been like very interested in these type of movies. I'm a huge horror fan and these movies, a lot of these movies fit well within that genre. Plus there's going to be other genres we're going to be doing that are considered disturbing, not just horror. That's kind of where this podcast kind of took place. I mean, I do do a disturbing movies uh, series on my channel where basically I just review movies that uh, are considered by some as being quote unquote disturbing or, you know, extreme. So I just kind of thought it'd be really cool to do a podcast on these type of films. I mean, this, this is a very interesting type of genre, what people, you know, get kind of shocked. It, by. it generally seems that people are constantly Googling the most disturbing film or what films, you know, most messed up film, mm-hmm. most extreme film, yeah. you know, sick, twisted fuck film. So like, it seems like people are really interested in it. So when you came to me with that idea <clears throat> for a podcast, I was like, yeah, that sounds great actually. And of course we had to bring moods in because his, you know, opinion on things really definitely adds to the, to the conversation. Yeah. I like this whole, I like this whole theme of, uh, you know, is it disturbing you know, is it not disturbing? I I like this whole thing, you know, just to, you know, get everyone on the same page here. You know, we're not trying to be hipsters or anything and, and kind of jump on this whole disturbing cinema, you know, wave that's kind of going through with everybody in the communities and things like that. We're here mostly to kind of interject and just give honest opinions and to prove or disprove. And, you know, like I said, give our opinions on disturbing cinema. Is it disturbing or is it not disturbing? Yeah. It's less of a review show. And more yeah. of like just the dissection. It's more of just like taking what we're presented with and, and really looking at it in detail and kind of figure out like what is it that makes these things so appealing or unappealing or mm-hmm. you know disturbing or not disturbing. Like Kyle mentioned, we're you know kind of just doing one movie at a time here. So one episode, one movie. We won't be doing any type of franchises uh, it, with five movies in an episode or something. Yeah, these won't if be any- too too long either exactly if anyone's familiar with the 22 shots podcast it'll be nothing like that <laughs> like pretty, absolutely pretty nothing <laughs> that one film you know dissecting it completely different formats so yeah so if you're expecting something like that no it's not going to happen this is one film it's like a one night only 
type yep. thing. So absolutely, one and, and done. Another oh, yeah. thing behind the uh, way we're going to actually do these is we're not going to do them week to week. Uh, this show might be weekly or biweekly when you actually hear it. But all of the first season will probably have been recorded or will uh, maybe we'll do like a pilot thing or something. So in case you're asking us, you know, say something and then we don't mention it on the next show, it's because they're already pre-recorded. Uh, these are these are not like a weekly format show. Uh, and we're doing it in sort of like how a TV show does in seasons. And we already have episodes planned out. I think it's really cool what we have uh, worked out and what we're going to be doing and yeah, yeah. Uh, we're actually you know something that we, we should mention because you you did mention that we're going to be like dissecting these and it's going to be very different and in in that we are going to be spoiling these films uh, yep. because it's it's different it's not it's not a movie review it's yeah we we spent a little bit of time you know discussing, discuss, discussing this scratching our head and scratching our balls over this and <laughs> we thought it was probably in the best interest to do it you yeah. know because i think i think the conversations will be a lot better a little more interesting i think our opinions can be expressed a lot more you know honest and you know without having to beat around the bush is what i'm saying you know with yeah. these conversations on the films and just let everyone know how it is i mean these are disturbing films let's just throw it at you yeah, right. and how can so, you really dissect a movie without kind of spoiling it at some point? So, yeah, especially when we're asking specific questions like, "Is it disturbing?" and then why? Because you're going to have to display certain scenes that you, you that are probably in the ending or give away key plot points or something. Exactly. Uh, to this, discuss this, it. this film, yeah, th- this uh, you know first film couldn't have been any better for us to you know figure that out with was you know Martyrs was definitely a film um, that we discussed and we just came to the conclusion that we can't really film without spoilers like the conversation i think would be so limited to the point where why not just do it for all the films yeah. exactly right yeah you know so why not right so yeah yes and uh one thing that i wanted to ask you guys like personally to you what what makes a film disturbing or what disturbs you and you know i guess kyle you can lead off with that yeah i mean uh, pretty much with what I consider, I guess, a quote-unquote disturbing film or disturbing cinema would be pretty much a film that has some some kind of shock value or shocking visuals. I guess a lot of these movies that we're going to be covering and a lot of a lot of the movies we're going to be doing and that we have planned, I guess it's it's basically a movie that that when you watch, you're kind of not just floored. I mean, Floored is kind of the wrong word. You're just kind of surprised by. Like, you go into the movie, uh, a good example of um, uh, a movie that's kind of like this, which is probably one of the more well known, I guess, quote unquote, extreme, disturbing movies, is a Serbian film. So, you know, and we'll, we'll kind of get into that if we ever do that movie. But going into a movie such as, you know, of that nature, maybe, you know, any of these movies, going into those movies and not really knowing much about the plot, you watch it and you're like, wow, these are just a lot. There's just a lot of really. Uh, I guess, fucked up aspects to this movie. How could the director even come out with this movie? Another example, Cannibal Holocaust, stuff like that where, you know, a movie gets, director gets put behind bars or something like that, gets put in prison or jail. That's, things like that. Things that can be in a movie that can cause, you know, people to be very, very surprised or, you know, get anxious or visuals that are really messed up or, I guess, key plot points in the actual movie itself that are, you know, very hush-hush that a lot of people don't talk about. That kind of stuff to me can be disturbing to some people. It, honestly, for me, I've seen so many movies that are really just messed up movies. It's really hard to very, you know, to pretty much get me like, oh wow, this was disturbing. But at the same time, some people that go into some of these movies that watch them, they have never seen a movie that's got, you know, certain aspects to it as other movies. So it, it's it's really hard to say what some people consider disturbing, what what some people consider not. But most of the movies we're going to be covering, and most of what I think or I consider a disturbing film, is movies that tend to go beyond the bounds of most movies, like a movie that you would go to see in a movie theater. These are movies that hit on things that normally other movies wouldn't, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. you know have very mm-hmm. very weird and not natural visuals, I guess. So that's yeah. kind of where I'm going with that. And when it comes to, I mean, really, it comes down to you know personal opinions too. Everyone has a different idea of what is disturbing. It really to them. is very Every, personal. Everybody's disturbed by different things. You know, like you know, some people aren't disturbed by animal killings, and other people are completely disturbed by them. So it yeah. just it just depends. For me, personally, man, it's it's very simple for me. It's realism. That's yeah. what disturbs me. It's realism. It's um, any film that depicts a realistic situation 
uh, that I believe in my heart that could totally happen. That shit scares the shit out of me, and I find yeah. that very disturbing. Like I, I've I've said this many many times, whether it be on my channel or reviewing films on body bags, or it's uh, you know on the podcast. I've I've stated many times that I find home invasion to be fucking terrifying because that that is like it's one of those things where you know you feel comfortable in your house, you never really think of it, and then you know if someone was to invade you and you know and violate you and do things like that, like I mean that's realistic. It happens. Yeah, right, yeah. that shit's scary. It's fucking terrible, and like, and and it's the simple fact of you can't do anything about it. If someone just broke into your house, if someone broke into my house right now, I like it would be crazy. Like I, I'm not prepared for it. Yeah, and I know, That's especially, it, it definitely probably changes once you have you know a kid. Like th- that becomes like, oh, yeah. your biggest oh, yeah. fear at that point. Exactly, yeah. and it's just those realistic situations. Like you know, like I always say, man, you know, home invasion films—they always do it for me. You know, I just find them terrifying because it, it could really happen to anybody at any moment. Um, you know, like, like slasher films. No, I don't find, you know, a lot of slasher films are not disturbing because, I mean, they're theoretically, you know, not realistic. I mean, let's yeah. face it. Come yeah. on. These things are probably not going to go down like this. But Wait, you're telling me Jason can't come back to life a bunch of times? Exactly. But, you know, home invasion, I mean, we know it happens. It definitely does happen. These things happen. I mean, look at The Strangers. It's based on true events. I mean, obviously, there's things in the film that have been depicted, you know, just for cinema too, but, you know, things like that. But, yeah, it's definitely it's it's realism man um you know you know i just i just find it to be it's terrifying and and that's the scariest thing about this world that we live in is that we live in a scary fucking world you know and a lot of these films they're almost an escape from it sometimes so i don't Mm -hmm. find it very disturbing you know um but uh, i i have a funny story about cannibal holocaust kyle the first time i seen um cannibal holocaust you know i'd always heard you know it was like it was the craziest movie it's so, so crazy and stuff and i remember watching on a bootleg vhs way back in the day and not knowing but i had actually watched the a cut version like it actually had the animal killings cut out of it and stuff so that was my first introduction to cannibal holocaust and i was like you know it, it wasn't really that bad you know like i wasn't <laughs> like okay you know i was like okay, you know there was some there were some moments in the film where the effects were really good you know like the part where you know the the scene where regaro diodato actually went to jail because they thought the girl hanging on the on the pole was fucking yeah. real yeah they had to prove that that wasn't real so you know when i was you know when i was younger i was like damn that actually is pretty real looking Years later, I saw the the uncut version. I was actually disturbed because, <laughs> like, oh, animal yeah. killings, real animal killings to me like that. You know, and not really knowing the whole history behind Cannibal Holocaust because, like, the killings and stuff that happened in that film, you know, those animals were later eaten by those real tribes that they were filming. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's just the way of life for them. But we yeah. don't know that when we're first watching that. So I'm seeing animal killings by these white people and stuff. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, no, thank you. You can fucking sign me out of this one right now. You know, even when I watch Cannibal Holocaust now, I still, I kind of, I always think about that. I do find it a little disturbing, animal killings and things like that, but just thought I'd yeah. throw in a little note. That, that's Cannibal that's actually a really good point because there's actually a movie out there that's, and you guys, I don't know if you guys have heard of it or not, but it's it's similar to kind of what you're talking about. Um, it's uh, called Earthlings. It's like, a, I think it's a documentary. I think it's hosted by Joaquin Phoenix and it's like a movie. Wait, wait, wait what? <laughs> It's called Earthlings. Who's, who's the it hosted by? Joaquin uh, Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix. He said Yachtling. Joaquin, whatever his name is. <laughs> whatever the fuck this dude is. The dude with the cleft lip. You know what I'm talking about. So yeah, People in Hollywood. Yeah, like, exactly. So, yeah. so, And it's actually like a um, – basically like a documentary on him going around to animal – like uh, I guess where they like basically uh, cut up animals to, to make the meat like pigs and you know chicken and stuff like that. The butcher yeah. – or not yeah. butcher. You know what I'm talking about where they yeah. would basically kill them and make them into meat. And something like that, yeah, animal killings to me – I'm, I'm I'm the same way. Like, I feel like animal killings to me is, is 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 disturbing when you see an actual animal be killed. I mean, it's a human, and not a human, but obviously it's an animal life. It's a it's life, and you see it, you know, dying in front of you. So that's very very disturbing. And mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, Cannibal Holocaust. I mean, I think it's funny how the Grindhouse release of that has the the, the animal free killing version and has the the animal uh, killing version of it that you can play. But but yeah, man, like uh, anything that's realistic like that, and also uh, another thing, uh, manip- manipulation. Like uh, a lot of these these disturbing flicks or these extreme flicks I've noticed, uh, they have a lot of manipulation behind them, like a person manipulating another person or <clears throat> making them do something that they normally wouldn't do. For That's kind of disturbing because that can happen. Like they could yeah, somebody yeah, do it, something, you know what I mean? A prime example, of, you know, is uh, – or being forced into things and stuff like that and like a girl next door. You know, that whole situation – 
and the thing for me about that film is that, you know, it, it's, it's the time period it takes place in too. You know, the fifties are supposed to be this nice, cozy, like white picket fence type area. And that's where this, that story takes place. Yeah. You know, is that's this my thunder. Summer- that's my thunder right there. I always go into that, like how it's set in the fifties. You just stole yeah. my thunder. <laughs> well, because you don't, you, well, yeah, because you don't really think of, yeah, sorry. No, <laughs> but, I'm joking. You, you, you but feel it's a the good same one. way. I know. It's a, it's a I'm really good one it. because it's, it's disturbing in the fact you're thinking like this white. Leave it the beaver like, style, you know, just yeah. pleasant bill. Yeah, it's yep. like this white collar neighborhood, you know, it's, it's upper class, you know, white picket fences, like these type of situations shouldn't be happening. It's happening to real people and it did. And, um, that is sick shit, man. Humans yeah. are the sickest and most vile things in the face of the earth. And just the real, the realism in it is just, um, enough to make me sick. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like another, another thing that I know we were kind of going off tangent on some of this, but another thing that comes to mind is a lot of these movies have rape in them too, which that's mm-hmm. one of those things that a lot of people, you know, you see it on, on film with certain things and you're like, Oh, that's kind of, that's obviously fake. But some people consider like, I know a lot of people, you say the word rape and they're like, Oh, whoa, yo, don't say that around me or don't let me, I don't want to think about that. And a lot of the films that we're going to be covering do have that in it as well. So that's another something else that, that can be con- considered disturbing a big aspect to disturbing cinema or disturbing film so uh um, yeah, but, but yeah, yeah i mean before we get off on like a tangent i mean what about you jp what do you think oh well thanks guys for giving me the opportunity to speak but, i know um, right <laughs> <laughs> no uh me personally you guys touched on all of the key factors really but kyle mentioned it very briefly early on and to me personally when i think of like one singular thing that it is it's it's boundaries it's going beyond what what you find you know acceptable or not even acceptable but you know there's a difference between jason walking up to somebody and slashing them down right it's very simple it doesn't feel that personal but when it's it's stretched out and you're going beyond and it's becoming more of a personal thing or it's a total disregard for humans or or you know your fellow man that's when it becomes disturbing to me because it's it's no longer this just simple uh, you know, rant, like if somebody just shoots somebody, it's, it's one and done, but, but it's almost, there's more, it's just pushing it further and further. And as that line goes further, as you stretch it further, that's when I think it becomes more and more disturbing. That's why rape, uh, most of the time it is disturbing is because it does feel very personal, uh, because there's no way for it to not be usually, you know, it's often a thing of, it's not often a just sexual, thing it's 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 a power thing that's that's why it's disturbing different torturous things because torture becomes very personal and and the boundaries and uh the realism moods killed it with that because i think that's what it really comes down to if it's slapsticky like in you know gutter balls it's not as disturbing like yeah it's a little Mm -hmm. bit because of the, the image that you're seeing but at the end of the day, when it's played serious, that's when it has the most emotional effect on me personally. Stuff like The Girl Next Door where it's just it's just brutal. How can you do this to other people? That's what's disturbing to me is just mm-hmm. the disregard for um, you know, your fellow man. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, using definitely. using another human being, you know, to further your knowledge yeah. of something, you know, that's that's disturbing because it's very selfish and it's wrong. You know, given the circumstances, but we'll get into that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, actually, good way to like segue into that. The film we're actually talking about tonight, I believe you mentioned it earlier, is probably the one that I've heard most in terms of the, the brought up in disturbing film talk. And that film yeah. is Martyrs from the year 2008, directed by Pascal Lugier. Is it yeah, Lockyer. Lockyer? <laughs> it, it's a it's a French name. It's, it's hard to, I, I don't. I, I'm so bad with names. Yeah. So you is this a French Canadian somebody. film or an actual French film? Uh, uh, this is it, a French it's film. A, it's a French Canadian film. It's, oh, uh, it's, it's it's funded by France and I believe. Well, it's fully shot in Quebec in Canada. Huh. So it's well, it's a France Canada film, but it's a co-production. Funny. It's, it's yeah, a French Canadian pro- slash French production. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, Okay, so one thing that I did want to kind of just do in these shows is also just you know briefly touch on the director. Has he done anything else? Me and Kyle kind of do this in our TV show podcasts. But this guy, it seems to me that the only thing he's really done besides this is Not he much. directed <laughs> The Tall Man with uh, Jessica Biel, which um, 
he well he did uh house of voices oh, um, for, about four was that years good ago. did you see it yeah i own it house of voices is a really really strange film it's one of those films that i need to rewatch because the first time i watched it i was i, I honestly didn't really feel it too much but i knew that it has something there it's strange it's I'll nothing like martyrs it's not i mean martyrs is a little you know it has its own moments but this one is like almost like psychologically strange so yeah Interesting. To the point he where made it's a like, lot more on it than he did Martyrs. <laughs> yeah, House of Voices. Yeah, I, it must have had some type of following or whatever. I mean, it's been it's been a few years since I've watched it, so um, I got to check it out again. It's a weird one though. Yeah. So he hasn't really done much else besides that. Uh, have you guys Have you guys seen The Tall Man? No, I, I seen any it. other movie that he's done other than Martyrs. Okay. I, yeah, I, I own it, but I haven't watched it. The, the Tall Man never really interested me at all. I, I hear I it's not even like a horror film at all. Yeah, I've I've heard the same thing. So, I mean, it would be cool if it was actually about the tall man. <laughs> I was <laughs> yeah, going to say, yeah. he, he sure did lose a lot of money on the tall man. It says here that the budget for that movie was 18 mil and he only made 5 mil off of it. <laughs> oh, yikes. Wow, yeah. really? Crazy. Yeah, because yeah, that was uh, his first, like, American product. Like, it was an American It still film. says it was a Canadian and French mystery horror movie. So, oh, yeah. for, really? That was Canadian? Oh, okay. Interesting. So, um, <laughs> Martyrs is actually, you know, just to get into the history of it a little bit and, and to kind of get into, like, its reputation, because that's kind of part of this. Uh, so the film was part of the new era French horror films. You know, Jeremy would be proud that we're talking about it. What that basically was was sort of this new wave of films that were coming out of France and, I guess, co-productions with Canada um, that, you know, were, were kind of – on another level of violence and extreme uh, factors. Martyrs is the one that I remember hearing about most. I remember the first time I heard about Martyrs. It was on YouTube. I was watching these two guys who used to sit there and they had like a show. I don't remember the name. I don't remember who they were. I know one of them's name was like something Voorhees and the other ones was like something Myers. They had the whole shtick going and they were asked – they did a little segment where kind of like how we do on the podcast, Moons of 22 Shots, where they ask, they were asked a question like what's the most messed up film you ever seen? And Martyrs was one that I think they talked about a lot. So I always heard about this this Martyrs movie, but I never knew what it was really about. I, I was able to ma- manage to stay away from all the spoilers and stuff for many years because this was actually my first time viewing this film but I'd always heard of the reputation of it based on all the YouTube circles that would talk. And I remember when these films came out, when the, the martyrs and the high tensions and the frontiers and all these films from France were coming in. And honestly, if I'm, if I'm hundred percent honest, looking back on it, the general like American audience was very resistant to these films. They lumped them in with hostile. They didn't like them. Now I've seen a complete change these yeah. these films are respected these films are talked about it's almost like at first there was a resistance and it was wrong to like these films and now it seems like just normal like everybody likes them but i yeah. remember there was a huge resistance to these like quote unquote torture porn films yeah that's where the name pretty much came the torture porn name kind of came about was a lot of these films and yeah it's the new french extremity movement is what they call it i remember the you said the first one that you heard was martyrs the first one i ever heard was high was uh high tension i remember when that movie came, came out, out a I was little like, bit earlier than martyrs. yeah I, I was say, that that movie had it was a five, lot of uh you know backing behind it when it first came out so yeah that movie was out quite a bit earlier i think it like in france it came out what 2003 it never made its way over here and so yeah it was till 2005 i believe but five or i six. think it did a lot of the festival circuits like the directors and stuff where where always it like similar uh different film festivals with martyrs and and inside and all those different films i believe throughout yeah. the years so it kind of they got lumped in together and I yeah. do believe Martyrs was the last one of that, like you know, that fi- that Fab Five type type collection, deal, yeah. collection of uh, French extreme horror films, you know, to actually come out, which is pretty interesting because it was 2008, right? Yeah, yeah Martyrs came out, in which is yeah, I think it was the last of because I think Inside and them came out in 06 and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, I think it's I think it's funny. The only thing holding high tension. From a an R rating to an NC seventeen rating was three minutes of the movie. 
Hmm. I think that's pretty funny. But I remember, like, I remember seeing, speaking of, like, the new French extreme movement, I remember seeing high tension everywhere when it first came out or, like, around the time within the first couple of years it came out. I saw that movie being, like, like I saw it in, like, all the video stores. I remember seeing it, like, being sold everywhere. I just remember the cover of that movie, like, everywhere, and I really didn't know what it was at first. And I was like, let me check this out. And I remember seeing it, and I was like, wow, this is – this is some pretty rough stuff. It was like around the time I was like about to graduate high school, I was like, damn, this is pretty, pretty crazy. And I didn't really know what the extreme French movement was. I don't even think the extreme French movement, uh, movement was a thing when that movie came out. I think it didn't start, they didn't start like talking about that until later on after a couple of those movies came out. But, but yeah, I mean, that, that was the first one. That's kind of funny that Mars was your first. The high tension, I remember that one back in the day was a pretty big one when it first came out. So, so. Mm-hmm. What, what what was your first experience hearing about martyrs meds? Uh, well, I mean, being at like a Canadian production, I remember when it actually got it got released here. I believe in oh wait was it oh eight or no oh nine? I can't remember. Um, but I hadn't really heard too too much about it. I actually came across it randomly, and um, I was talking to a guy, this guy that used to work in this uh, this. Uh, you know, basically media store I used to shop at, you know, back in those days when we actually had a little more, <laughs> you know, to shop at. Um, he was quite knowledgeable and stuff like that. And, and I was, you know, in there buying movies and stuff. And he's like, you know, um, have you seen this movie? He literally asked me if I'd seen Martyrs. And I'll never forget this conversation, actually, because he says to me and I'm like, no, I haven't really I haven't seen it yet. And um, he goes, uh, he goes, well, you know, do you like hostile? And like the first thing he compared it to was hostile, <laughs> which makes and I was, sense. And I said, yeah, you know, I like hostile. And he goes, well, if you like hostile, man, you know, check this out. It's, he goes, it's, it, he says it's a little harder. And I was like, what do you mean harder? harder. <laughs> he said the word harder, but I, you know, and I was like, okay. So, you know, I, I purchased it and checked it out, but that was really the first time it was about the time it came out, I guess, like on media. I had, you know, honestly seen, uh, high tension and, uh, I guess I didn't see frontiers until after, I think Frontiers was actually the last one I'd seen. I'd seen them, so yeah. Inside, um, I seen Inside after too. Okay, yeah. So I think Frontiers and Inside were actually the last two I ended up seeing. So I think the main reason that we picked Martyrs for the first episode one we actually had a different film picked for it, but I couldn't I couldn't get it in time or whatever. But uh, this one was definitely the one actually that I suggested first and then we kind of moved back to this one. And it's mainly because like it really was like the first one besides like the August Underground films. See, those were different because I heard of those more of like a snuff film, like a Faces of Death or something like that. This was like the first movie that I he- kept hearing and fucking hearing over and over again about about it. And mm-hmm, I, I mm-hmm. honestly just wanted to finally see it. <laughs> But it's also because of its popularity among the people who talk about disturbing films. If you see a disturbing film list, Martyrs is on it. Any Google list that you look at, it's it's usually there. Yeah, it's usually within the top three or five films that are on that list if they're ranked. It's always yeah. on everyone's list, like Martyrs, yeah. Martyrs, Martyrs. So, mm-hmm. yep. So, uh, with that said, I say we actually give the IMDb description plot. Pretty much this movie, Martyrs, is about, uh, well, it says here, the storyline, 15 years after a horrifying experience of abduction and prolonged torture, Lucy embarks on a bloody quest for revenge against her oppressors. Along with her childhood friend, Anna, who also suffered abuse, she quickly descends without hope into madness and her own delusions. Anna left on her own. Anna, left on her own, begins to re- re-experience what Lucy did when she was only 12 years old. That is absolutely, like, the best description for this. It is. Yeah, <laughs> and that was actually user-submitted, which is pretty surprising. So Yeah, that's a good one, man. Props to that yeah. user. What's his name? Uh, his, uh, well, it just says his email address. It says it's written by K Wedgwood or K W E D G W O O D at hotmail.com. You know what? Yeah, I, b- I bet K Wedgwood would love some dick pics listeners. I bet like, I'll need to send him the best dick pics possible. Find the most disturbing, like, find the most disturbing Google images possible and send them to K. Yeah, like the blue corn dog or something. I'm sure that I, exists. I, I it's a good is, story. It's a good story. Sorry to cut you off. It's a good storyline as long as you're giving spoilers, right? Because yeah, there you know, is if, actually if, yep. if, if you stopped it, you know, it says without hope into madness and her own delusions. And then, you know, that last line that's in the storyline, you know. By giving that, you are stating something right away. 
Yeah. That's 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 funny that you noticed that. In a of, way. I was reading that. I didn't even notice that. That's kind of like giving away spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> also, when it says Anna is left on her own to be and begins to re-experience what Lucy did, when that's like a pretty big spoiler as well. Oh, massive! Like there's two in there. Yeah, because yeah. I, I would have never saw that coming. You know, like I obviously this was the first. I actually b- before I read those, I actually re- like pre-read them just to make sure because i've i've come across the storylines and stuff that are what that's total spoiler right there yeah <laughs> and we don't do it on the 22 shots so um i just wanted to read quick just the actual meaning of martyr just quickly just in case some yes, somebody I'm by so chance so glad you did that uh, it, it's actually really short you know it, it's right to the point uh, a martyr is a person who is put to death or endures suffering because of a belief principle or cause so hmm. interesting yes. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much the sum up of a martyr. It's like a, it's <laughs> yeah. like, it's almost like, yeah, like a sacrifice, like almost like a uh, Jesus Christ type thing, in a little bit. Yeah, well, that's that. I think that's what the Christians uh, they always stated that Jesus Jesus was the first martyr. Oh, it's a. Yeah. Gr- I actually love the word. Like it, it's not, it's like a nice sounding word, not nice, but I mean, like I've always kind of liked that word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I will say I will say this, um, and something I, I think was it's pretty interesting to kind of note, I guess, of the movie uh, of why it was rated. Uh, this movie is unrated if you get it on DVD. It was originally rated R, obviously for a theatrical release. Um, mm. The reason why it was rated R, it says here, is for disturbing. There's the key word, disturbing, <laughs> disturbing slash severe ab- aberrant behavior involving strong bloody violence, torture, child abuse, and some nudity. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, yeah, it's pretty brutal. Like, that's that's a pretty brutal description of – I'm surprised it even gets an R rating with all that stuff in it. But, yeah, it was released on uh, DVD, and I believe that there's a Blu-ray release that's um, – I think it's Region 2 or some shit that's, uh, you know, uh, un- unrated. So – um, that's, that's the reason why I was rated R and another little quick trivia knowledge of, um, of the movie. The director has stated in the past in interviews that he was inspired by hostile, but instead of making a movie about suffering, he wanted to make a movie about pain. Ooh. So interesting. Pretty interesting. That's kind of well. like, like Eli Roth or you're, I, you're so simple. You didn't even yeah. see that you can ab- elevate this above and beyond. <laughs> I think oh, yeah. I actually I think I actually read one time too that the director wrote this movie um either he was just coming out of depression like he was super depressed at, at a time and he ended up writing this movie I think while he was depressed or he was just coming well, out I can't remember sense. I, the I don't key see word how is this depre- could make you depressed. depression Well that's the thing and I think that's why um it's so well it's just beyond dark Yeah yeah right? it's just it dark is. because when you're depressed you don't have any type of you know good visions so yeah. Yeah. So, um, the one, you know, we can get into this one a little bit. So it does kind of open up with, you're just kind of introduced into a girl who was obviously tortured. She escaped and now she, you're seeing like kind of video footage of her kind of befriending another girl at, I guess what would be like a, a home, like some sort of a nursery or not nursery, um, adoption type thing. I don't know what it's called. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, orphanage, maybe. Orphanage, like, there you go. That's, that's I was just thinking it was an orphanage. It, it's strange because that she would be f- befriending her friend at an orphanage, considering she does, like, the one girl, um, she has a mom. So generally, you're at an orphanage yeah. when you're orphaned. Huh. <laughs> that's yeah, kind exactly. of the point of an orphanage. Yeah. <laughs> so I was always a little bit confused by the two where they exactly were because. Maybe it was like a foster home? Maybe it was like a. Uh, or like I mean, maybe like a uh, like a religious what do they call like the Christian homes like a religious home maybe I, I don't know I mean it could be due to a lot it, it could have been some type of foster I don't know who really knows but I just always thought that was an interesting note in the film I yeah. remember that the way but right. and you know shortly after that it kind of cuts forward um, you know fifteen I think years fifteen years 15 and years. we're introduced to a seemingly normal family. Uh, in which there's just a little bit of character development. We're just kind of spending some morning with them. And uh, out of fucking nowhere, <laughs> you hear a knock on the door and it just goes like full man. Haywire. That. This is actually, in my opinion, yeah. one of the more extreme uh, one of the more extreme scenes. Yeah, Lucy. Uh, one of her more – or the movie's more extreme uh, scenes in the actual movie – um, of, you know, Lucy coming to the door, pretty much blowing away this entire family with a shotgun. And we have no idea why she's doing this with like, yeah. none of us know, like what, what is she sitting here shooting everyone with a shotgun for? Like she shoots the mother, the father and the two kids with a shotgun. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, the, 
the opening scene in this movie to me is well is a prime example of some of the most unforgiving, unapologetic dark cinema I have ever seen in my life. And that's why I this, love it. This, this is what I love about this movie, man. The director just said, fuck you, everybody. This is what I'm doing. Yep. And what I mean by unforgiving and unapologetic is the simple fact that she has an idea of what she's going to do and she's sticking to it. She's not giving this family mm-hmm. any word to explain what they may or may have not have done. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and she does, she doesn't even hesitate. She fucking kills, you know, the, the father and she, like that. She does pause with the kids, but still, she doesn't let them talk. And she, she, it's, it's just, emotionless also, like at first, yeah. you know, it, it's just like you said, she's in there to do a job. And one of the yeah. best things about that, it, th- that choice of making, of filming it like that, where you, there's a brief moment with the son where she's like, do you know what your parents did? And that's the cue that we kind of, understand that oh this is a revenge thing uh from what happened to her when she was young and then she just blows him away and the similar situation happens with the daughter and you just know at that point okay there's direct there's there's no rules here there's nothing that won't Mm -hmm. happen and right away you you're as as an audience as a member of the audience you realize that um okay i can see anything here and instantly and i had a problem with this me and kyle was talking about previously right before we recorded this we were talking about our ash versus evil dead show and there's something in there where it's like you know they're not going to die like you know there's rules to this world and they're not going to cross any boundaries this one has zero of those rules exactly no, just no rules the way they kill the kids yep. mm-hmm. and i've said you've heard me moods in the past i've always oh. hated that, that, that movies are too scared to kill kids <laughs> exactly and you know it the opening scene in this film really sets the it sets the whole stage oh, for this film. Yes. You know, in such a perfect way, because you know, like you said, there is no rules. Yep. So, and anything goes. And that's one of the coolest things about this film. And I've always stated this film to be a, what I call a schizophrenic. This is not a, you know, a film school term. <laughs> I call this, I always refer to this film as a schizo film. That's a because, great description, by the way. You, you mentioned yeah, that earlier and I forgot to comment on that before we started recording. And I was like, yeah, dude, that, you nailed it with that. Yeah, it's got like two different, you know, kind of sides to it, which, you know, what schizo is. And, you know, it really sets it up so well. But I, I think one of the scariest things about this film is that you don't know where it's going, man. You know, like in the first half, first 45 minutes of the film, you see what you get in, um, you know, in the house. Well, you're instantly confused, too, because you're like, OK, I know what bad people look like and. And they didn't really look bad. They were like a normal mm-hmm. family. So you're like, what the hell's going on here? And you're kind of that, wondering. I, I, it just the whole movie, beginning of this movie is so confusing. Like, every, like you pretty much go into this intentionally movie intentionally confusing. Like you start out seeing this girl running down through an alley, and you have no idea why she's there. Then it ends up like jumping into the future. You're seeing a brand like a family who looks perfectly normal being blown away by a shotgun in an extremely disturbing manner. Like, I mean, it's pretty disturbing because she just walks up to every single one of these pieces, like these family members and just shoots them at point blank range in the chest with a shotgun. And you're like, what is going on right now? Why is this happening? And for the normal person to go into a movie like this, it's, I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, I I remember seeing the shotgun scene in this movie and I call it the shotgun scene because I actually show people this scene all the time on YouTube. I'm like, Hey, you got to look up the shotgun scene on, on, um, on martyrs and just tell me what you think of this. It's just pure power. It's, it's very powerful as like seeing it as a, a person who, I mean, I, I enjoy like cinema period. So even seeing it as a person that enjoys cinema, much less seeing as a person that barely watches movies at all, it, it'll hit you in the gut, man. It's like it's going to kick you in the gut. You're going to be like, what the fuck? Especially because like, it's also really surprising too. Very yeah. surprising. And like even if you didn't watch the movie and you just saw that scene, I've shown people this scene, the shotgun scene in this movie, just the scene. And they've never seen the movie and they're like, holy shit, what the fuck did you just show me? Like is that real? <laughs> like because it looks pretty realistic for – what it is i mean it's pretty good effects but it's yeah. very very powerful yeah. for what it is mm-hmm. so. yeah that the shotgun scene itself is a scene that can be you know really dissected and delved into and i think that's kind of what we're doing here one of the things that i think is really powerful about it also is the aftermath like where you're she like you're just kind of seeing the the aftermath in the house the blood splattered on the vase and the you know blood all over the floor and yeah. the in the hallway oh yeah there, there's blood fucking i mean they, she covered that house man there's yeah. like chunk, and they it, even it felt feel, like little real. chunks of things and like body parts yeah. and you know things like that back I, to what you said earlier though it felt real like that felt to me what it would look like 
you know, in my imagination, if that happened. Yeah. I like, I like how he didn't really, you know, stray away from even showing the body too. Like generally in, uh, you know, in cinema, when a kid, when a uh, child is killed, um, you know, it's kind of like done, you know, they, they don't just keep kind of showing it and stuff. There's a scene where the bodies are moved into the bathroom. Uh, That's the mom's laying in the bathtub and they throw, um, I think, uh, who is it? Anna throws, is it Anna? Yeah, I believe Anna throws Anna, yeah. the little girl onto the mom and, you know, it pans back and shows the dead yeah. body. That's a very powerful image body. too. It is. And they do it a few times. But the, the craziest thing about that scene is that her eyes are open. She's mm-hmm. fucking kind of looking over and she's dead. Like yeah. she's yeah. been blown in half. And it's just really, really powerful because he doesn't stray away from it. He shows it many times in the edit, the way they edit it. And it's just like, holy fuck. Yeah. It just keeps reminding you over and over again that this is fucking real. There's no boundaries here. And we're yeah. going to keep coming at you full force. Something- you know, that – Something that I was thinking of, too, is like the, the scene that you're talking about where they're all in the bathtub is, you know, Anna starts pulling them out to kind of bury them in the backyard. How yeah. gritty was it? Did you feel of her dragging them through the the, the, the mud? mud and the dirt? Because there's no respect for the, your fellow man again. Right. That's, that's what it is. One of, one of my favorite things about that scene is when she brings the daughter outside and she hears something in the house, she literally drops the body and just runs back in there. Yeah. And again, that's the child. The, this, They're not this straying away girl. from anything in this film at all. They're just – now they're just kind of disrespecting dead bodies and yeah, just laying yeah. in mud and getting rained on. I mean and that's pretty visually stunning and it's like – it's so emotional when you're watching. You're like, damn, man. That girl's like 10. Yeah, and yeah. You start I was to like, they, 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 they're just like disrespecting the shit out of this whole family. Like, they're gonna blow them away. They're gonna drag him and throw the the dead daughter on top of the dead mother, uh, and well, suppose a dead mother uh, in the bathroom, and then she's gonna drag them through the rain and the mud, just drop them. What? It's, she didn't even give, give a fuck. And then the other girls upstairs looking down at them like, ah, oh, fuck them. You know, you 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 bury them basically. So it was just gritty, dude. It's gritty as fuck. It is, man. And, you know, like after pretty much all that kind of things go down and stuff, um, you have uh, uh, Lucy. You know, (laughs) this is kind of an interesting thing is that, you know, in the midst of all this shit, man, they're really kind of minorly focusing on what they're going to do here. But what does Lucy do? She fucking takes a nap. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, isn't that so insane? She like, like gets just... into like her little pants, like her panties, and like her little yeah. shirt, and she just like, takes a fucking nap, like nothing ever happened. <laughs> and for I, the I wonder viewer... if this guy ever seen angst, because I, I was getting like a vibe with like some of the body moving and some of the like shots in like the house and stuff. It, it... Maybe, maybe. But I, I love, I love that scene that you know, um, that Lucy goes for a nap because, you know. To the viewer, it's already very mentally punishing watching this film because you've just seen a bunch of crazy kills, a bunch of crazy shit going on. You don't really understand what's fully going on. And the same thing's happening to the characters. She's like she's totally exhausted mentally. And what yeah. does she do? She just takes a nap. And then you're just you're left sitting there going, Are you fucking serious? You're gonna go take a nap? Like you're already drained and it's uh, just ugh. I, I it, wanna... it, it, it's a really powerful I think it's more powerful for all the people think it is. Yeah, no, it really is. It's definitely something that could easily be missed, but subconsciously you're aware of it. You're aware that like there's something wrong with that. And big time. One of the things that I, I got to give credit to this film for, and this is something that I've said in the past, I believe, and I've always thought of, and I'll I'll continue to say, and if, if there's one way to really elevate your film for me is like continuity with, liquids and bloods and you know textures it's textures like the the caked blood on their face and the chapped lips like it it elevates your film to a much higher level just because it's detail it's it's about detail and there's a lot and i mean a lot of that in this film yeah and and that's the thing uh jp i mean we i mean kyle you can relate to we've reviewed a lot of films in you know since we've been doing this and stuff and consider ourselves minor critics here but those are the things that i notice like relatively all the time when I'm watching films and you know, it, sometimes it just, you know, the average film goer, I'm, you know, it'd be nice to go back to that and not notice those things. So you wouldn't yeah. pick as much, yeah. but we notice these type of things. But when you see it done properly, you're like, damn, that's elevates good. It, dude. Yeah, like, it did, it makes did you experience. notice her chapped lips and her haggard yeah. hair? Oh and yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the, the attention to detail with stuff. the anxiety of these characters. Is- it's, you know, it's for ridiculous. some exactly when you, when you you have a viewer that's examining your film that closely, it just man, it makes it so much better 
when there's you not tell, like continuity issues movie, and things like that. You can tell this movie was very important to the director when things like that um, are very, very noticeable. Uh, it, yeah, he's very passionate about this film in general because well, the very you don't shot, see that in general with a lot of movies. The shot that Mood said about the, the the way that she lays the daughter in the arms of the dead mother and the dead daughter in the shower. Like to me, that's all passion. Like you don't mm-hmm. think of a shot like that if you're not super into that's your film. Sh- that's a shot where you don't give a fuck as a director either because you know that kind of like scenery in a movie is going to get a lot of attention. I mean, no matter who you are, there's going to be critics watching your movie. They're going to say, dude, why did you lay this daughter on top of this mother? I bet you like, Roger Ebert was shitting bricks during this. Dude, he wouldn't even watch Solo. So, you know, he didn't, he probably ain't going to watch this shit. But like <laughs> what I'm saying is like this fucking movie in general, like the, the visuals, like the shotgun scene, the, the scene where the daughter is fucking dead and the son's dead and they get blown away. Who like the director just does not give a damn. He just is like, okay, I'm going to do what I want to do. Like Mood said, and I'm going to make this movie. I don't give a fuck. So about he listened to like, Moods? Like, well, <laughs> well, Mood was yeah, saying earlier, totally. you know, <laughs> but I mean, if that if that scene couldn't get any more uncomfortable, you know, you got this mother that's laying in this tub dead, her daughter's laying on her dead, but the mother's not dead. That yeah. is true, and it's that so is serious. one that is one scene where, like I said, this whole opening forty five minutes in the film is just it's so mentally punishing. You're like, are you kidding me? She's not, and then she just kind of gets up and she's, Ugh! and then what's the first thing she kind of notices? Like her daughter's laying on her dead, and you're just like, holy fuck, <laughs> it's so <laughs> brutal, man. And then she fucking drags her out, and of course Lucy's nowhere around. And uh, once Lucy figures out that Anna's actually trying to help her, help the mom now. Because I think she has this – at that moment, she feels kind of bad for her because you know, I don't think she fully understands exactly yeah. what Lucy's it's going there. through at that moment. Mm-hmm. But man, dude, I tell you, like Lucy's reaction to this is the just – Oh, for fuck! The sledgehammer, it's so yeah. brutal. Man. I was eating. I was, I was violence in this. Like her passion for wanting to kill these people is so brutal. It, it, it's it, just it's, so it's, honest. It's so honest. She doesn't even hesitate. She doesn't think yeah. about it. She just bashes her head in, but she doesn't stop. She's Dude. dead. Like she just keeps giving her and giving her. And the way it's filmed, it's filmed so in your face. It's literally right there. Yeah. You know, you're feeling those hits every fucking time. And this movie's so powerful in every scene. It, you're and just like, holy again, shit. It, dude. it goes beyond, right? It's, it's about like, there's a certain amount of punishment that is acceptable or what you would consider normal. And then she yeah. escalates that and goes beyond. This is personal. Yeah. It's so I, personal. I've seen this movie probably five or six times in my entire life. And when I watched that today, I actually watched the movie today again. I revisited it. I was I was eating a hamburger during that scene. I was in the middle of, of my hamburger. And this this chick was bashing in this chick's brains with a sledgehammer. <laughs> and you're like, oh, it kind of looks like And you're like, okay, well, I'm eating a brain right now. <laughs> and I'm watching a brain get smashed in. So it's like – what the fuck is my life right now? I was like so disgusted. I put the hamburger down. I was like, I gotta wait until the scene's over to even pick this back up. This is disgusting. Yeah. So yeah, it was a pretty very, it was a very <laughs> violent and disgusting scene to see, like, because it showed her head bouncing off the ground as she was getting hit with every blow. Yeah. It was crazy, dude. And and oh, I know you did mention that you know there was a lot of passion in that, or you know just uh, a seriousness to it. Uh, but we're kind of introduced to a concept here where we're seeing the delusions, if you want to call it that, of uh, the, you know Lucy, and that it's yeah. kind of driven by that too because we we find out through a little backstory flashback that she, when she escaped, she stopped and seen we see how she escaped, and then we she stopped and seen that there was another person captive, mm-hmm. and she essentially didn't stay to help yeah. yeah well she couldn't really i mean well, i mean she, whether whether she could or couldn't that's up for you know whoever would to you, decide. Would, would you <laughs> well, it, i would say not, fucker i'm out dude <laughs> that's not what's important though like your personal i yeah what you would do it's what what she feels from it is what's important. yeah exactly yep. yeah and yeah you know whether it's right or wrong whether you would or wouldn't what matters is she feels guilty yeah mm-hmm She's mm-hmm. having these flashbacks whether, of pretty whether, much that that person in yeah. general because I guess she does feel you know pretty guilty about the situation yeah. at hand. So whether it yeah. was the right thing to do because she probably she was a kid yeah, and she, couldn't do anything, it probably was the right thing to do. It, but that doesn't matter with the guilt. The guilt's going to be there yeah. for her personally. 
I do like how they how the how the directors set that up though. You know, with because first I didn't like it. I was because they don't tell you that, and I was like, what the fuck is this? I was like, this is like a ghostly now. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But it's yeah, it's just like it makes sense. her, Her demons and stuff that she's dealing with, and like, and at first when you're watching it, you're going. What the fuck is going on? Like, yeah. like I think the first time it happens, you're like, "Who the fuck is this person that's attacking her?" <laughs> yeah, know, it took me. Right. It took me two watches to figure out, and that, that that's that sounds weird, but the first time I ever watched this movie, I didn't really pay attention very closely to it because you mm. really do have to. Because when I first watched this movie and I saw that, I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And then I missed the por- the portion. You know, of the movie where you find out that it is just her inner demons. And, yeah. you know, I was like, OK, so I saw it again and I was like, oh, that makes a little bit more well, sense. One of the things is, Kyle, sorry to cut you off, but yeah, the yeah. subtitles, they move fast. There's actually a couple of times I had to rewind because, like, I'm trying to see what's on screen and and I missed a key point of dialogue. And I was like, wait, 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 <laughs> which is kind back. of ironic in a little uh, a little bit though because like the first half of the film does have the dialogue that's like the last 45 minutes has like no dialogue basically yeah <laughs> you know it's, it's, it's just it's kind of changes funny. tempo with with you know with dialogue completely but yeah i know what you're saying the, the subtitles actually do kind of fly by in this too but and, and you know there is scenes where yeah i mean there's a lot going on, on the screen too you don't want to really miss that so it's kind of funny I because like happening. i usually recommend and like i was telling jp this earlier before we even started um i don't normally recommend dubbing in movies whatsoever but this movie actually has pretty spot on dubbing I like i actually have watched this movie this, probably but... three or four times with dubbing on and it sounds fine like the actual dubbing is actually very well done i don't so... even consider it an option when i'm watching <laughs> films if i can watch a film in a native in, a, in its native language with subtitles that's the way i'm going to do it sometimes you don't have a choice like there's you know italian films that's just they're just dubbed over that's There's just the no way they are existing audio track <laughs> exactly it's just the way they are but so you accept it and but it's it's easier for me to accept that but if there's an option of throwing on a dub when there's subtitles no that's not i gonna just happen. don't know i, I, I might just, throw it on I, just I to see what you're talking about but i, I just can't imagine that it's, it's good it's actually really like honestly the dubbing in this movie and inside as well like i like if you actually watch the dvd the dvd i have for martyrs and inside both automatically have the dubbing on so i just kind of just watch them uh, but like i have i've watched both movies really with dubbing on, and it's Crazy. really not that bad Dead yeah snow is like that yeah, it's weird huh. because the, the dubbing comes on. And I don't even think about it. I just watch I it. I hate I'm, that more okay, than anything. Okay, I'll watch I'm, it. Whatever. When I pop in a film and, and like the dub track just comes up, I hate that, man. That drives yeah. me nuts. Yeah, and like I, just to be completely honest, as a viewer, I hate dubbing. And like the Martyrs dubbing is very well done. Like it really does huh. not – That it sounds obviously like it's fake because it is fake. But it, yeah, it, yeah. like the way that they actually perceive the dubbing is not that bad. You can watch it with it on and it actually isn't that bad. So You know, I, I never had a problem with – you know, with ADR and dubbing and, and, you know, things like that when I was, you know, pre going to school for this, but when working on films and doing sound and doing ADR and stuff like that, it, it, it I can't do it, dude. I can imagine. <laughs> I, I yeah. just, I know how it works and I'm just like, this is fucking bullshit, man. I need that original I track. The same way <laughs> if I were you. Know, you I just yeah, got so. someone dubbing over on, I'm like, okay, I, no, this is silly, man. Yeah. I, I, I thought it would have <laughs> been the most complicated thing. I remember when I first got my first foreign film, this is completely off topic, but my first foreign film was uh, the Ringu, and I thought it was going to be so complicated to watch. I asked for the Ring, and I got Ringu by mistake for Christmas or something, and I thought it was going to be so complicated to watch it with subtitles, and I just never watched it for years, literally years. And then it, I finally did, and I was like, this wasn't even that hard. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the worst dubbing, the worst dubbing you can probably listen to is South Korean movies or Korean movies in general. I actually had the dubbing on for about 20 minutes on I Saw the Devil and I was like this is the most laughable like excuse for a movie dubbing I've ever heard in my life. But it like, can turn you, any film into a comedy. Yeah, it really way. can. But like honestly, and I'm not yeah. even bullshitting, I'm saying that this movie is not that bad with dubbing. So if you guys are listening, if you want to watch it with dubbing, maybe check it out for like thirty minutes. If it sounds stupid, then turn it off. Who knows? But it was easier for me to it's easier for me to watch this movie because it's so kinda for me it was kinda confusing the first times uh the first two times I watched it to, to have the dubbing on. So I yeah. don't know. Whatever you guys prefer. So yeah. So m- moving forward in the film, uh, you know that that's kind of when we're then introduced to the fact that okay, we we still don't know whether these people did anything, right? 
you, mm-hmm. you assume did, did you guys assume that they didn't well, well lucy she does you know she does kind of bring out the piece of paper i think early is it it's a little bit earlier i think even up into this point and she shows anna the the news clipping and she actually has the head circled right and she's like yeah it's them yeah you know what yeah. i totally didn't i must have missed that because but there is but that. there is a, there is a certain there is a little bit of a degree a certain like uncertainty yeah um up into that point like yeah like because she does kill him and then she there's it's more of a reaction of her because she says to anna at one point she's like well it's 15 years later because or yeah because lucy says to anna she's like it's 15 years later because i think anna does say like are you sure this is the people yeah. kind of thing, right? Because there was kids, and I think it was more just a reaction, like "Holy fuck, you just took out a whole family." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Anna, Anna seemed very confused about the whole situation. Yeah. Like, well, that's an interesting thing because what is yeah. their relationship? You get the sense that they're friends from a long they back. They took they're care of each other friends. and stuff. Are they? That's pretty much it. Do you think and she Anna, had a love interest in? Ah, uh, see, that's what I was gonna say. Do you Anna, think Anna that Lucy Anna were, loved? Well, they, Lucy. Like their loved. bond was their bond was created because they both shared a, a you know a childhood trauma which was child abuse right yeah and i'm you know i'm assuming sometimes it affects girls to the point where you know they turn against guys and they, they lesbians that they, they became lovers because they shared that and i guess that's just how they understood each other but yeah they so were you guys agree that there was probably well, you, get the, okay. you get the idea of that they were together because the mother anna's mother called and she well, was like do- are you still with her you know what i mean like yeah yeah and you know and uh yeah they do kiss <laughs> at one point. Oh. Yeah, they, yeah, she kisses her while the dead bodies are around. It's like, okay, well, they don't give a fuck. They're lesbians. Yeah. This is pretty much it. So, but I mean, it's, it's definitely bonafide when Anna phones her mom, which is the, with the confusing thing, um, you know, about the orphanage and stuff. But, um, but yeah, uh, she, her mom literally says to her, like, are you still with her? She's evil. She's bad. Blah, blah, blah. Now, let like, me ask you guys this. I might have missed this as well. Did they explain how she found them? How who found them? How Lucy found the family, the people that did that to her. Well, she knew where they were. I mean, she probably tracked them down over time. And I mean, she ran from the place. She went back to the place she ran from. Yeah, but the, they're not going to stay at that place. I mean, the cops probably went. They to that were there. Place. They were apparently still there. I mean, that's the only thing I could think of is like they were still in the same compound. No, they were. No, they're in a different I, place, I'm, dude. It's a it's a different yeah because the other place was it, it was different. No, they didn't really explain it. I'm you know you just kind of have to well, take it. What for, I thought. Right, well, what when is. I noticed that they didn't, I instantly was like, "How do I feel about that?" And I was like, "Well, it's completely unimportant." Does not matter. To the, the thing plot is, one bit. the only thing I can think of is, you know, she had that news clipping. She had the names and stuff, and maybe she just went from there. I don't yeah, know. I mean, she and probably was. Through. She was probably stalking that company or the people that, like, the type of people or the people that were like, you know, holding that whole group. I don't up. think she knew about all that. Of what she had to the ending. There's stuff? no other ex- explanation. Why? Why did she have to know about all that? Well, no, I don't. Th- well, I don't. How honestly, else would she find them? <laughs> well, well the I think is, she just thought that these people tortured her. These people. Yeah, she doesn't know I don't, why or who they were. They just. I. Did. I honestly don't believe that Lucy knew exactly what these people or this corporation, whatever you want to call these people, uh, what their main goal was with them. I'll because tell you, you, why have, exactly. you have to remember, Lucy. Lucy was only, you know, roughly ten years old when this happened. You know, this is fifteen years later. She was, or or whatever, fifteen or whatever she was. So she was pretty young um yeah i don't think she knew exactly exactly what their goal was sense that that it that it isn't that she didn't know and because she spent 15 years with the other girl you're telling me that she wouldn't have said something about that over the time because you can see that the other girl when it happens to her is kind of all taken back and surprised by the whole situation i think she probably mentioned it to the other girl but she didn't go into the the depth of what it was Hmm. I don't think I think, so, man. I think they were ju- I think they were just young and they just felt like they were being tortured yep, for whatever reasons. What they I didn't so they wouldn't know. They wouldn't know otherwise. I mean, there's no reason for yeah. those people though. I just call them the people to really even inform them of what they're doing. Yeah, there really is. You know, well, no, they, well, they, they neither of them had well Lucy until had until no gets idea to a certain point. Happening. I mean, she had no idea whatsoever. You, you could tell you that. Do, yeah, you do see it later with Anna, you know, like the people they start to kind of like when she starts getting to a certain point mm-hmm. when they they kind of figure that maybe she is going to, you know, see the other side and blah, blah, blah. You know, they tell her. Well, you they know, lay it is... all out on the table as well a little bit, too. But that's different because she's an adult and she's she's. Yeah, they, they, they didn't pick her up off the street like this was mm. a different situational pickup. 
You oh, know big I mean? time. So big it time. makes sense yeah. that they would kind of explain to her like, well, this wasn't yeah. as planned, but you know, this is what we're going to do to you. <laughs> this is like what we're kind yeah. of all about. And speaking of which, yeah, um, know, it is revealed that for, first they do find that, that you got to talk about it. We got to talk about the scene where they find the one girl in the basement. And that's when you know for without a shadow of a doubt that these people are involved in it. She's exactly. chained up in the basement. That was a pretty like, that was another powerful scene. I thought whenever, you know, that she goes down into the basement and that, that chain kind of just like jerks uh-huh. and you're like, she kind of like, it doesn't that's even show what it is. Right there, dude. That's, it's very good filmmaking because great. it doesn't reveal who it is until she gets to the person. Like that person could have easily shine the flashlight down there and say, Oh, this is who it is. But she, it waited, it, they waited until she got all the way down to the actual, you know, thing, <laughs> if you want to call it that. <laughs> And it's sh- it's showing the flash, and you're like, whoa, what the fuck? And like, yeah, it's like yeah. a woman with like yeah. a fucking That's face a mask point. on and all yeah. that shit. So you know that this whole next c- scenes that play out, I think are, are are brilliant. Um, for one, when she first gets her upstairs, you can just see just so many different. Um, this is great acting, by the way. You can see so many different emotions going through the the prisoners body they don't they don't know anything they're they're so confused they still don't know what's going on they they can't see anything they've been in a hole tied up for god knows how long they don't know they just there's just utter confusion and chaos like running through their head and then you see uh what, what's the second girl's name not lucy the other one uh, anna. Anna. anna you see anna grab some like alcohol and she comes up and she's like uh, she's just completely confused like i don't know what to do like i don't i can't even help you like what do i do to you like you, you're yeah. fucked. You know what I mean. And that scene is powerful to me because she go, she brings a bottle of alcohol, like she's gonna clean some wounds or something. And she just looks and it's like, well, there's, there's nothing so I many, can do here. There's so many wounds and she has no idea where to start. Yeah, like, it, I, this little bit of what I have here is not gonna help you. Yeah, and, yeah, and it, she it, comes it, to it, terms. It's with clear that. as day, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then she, you know, takes her to the bathtub and stuff and pulls that damn thing out of her. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's just wrong to do to somebody to st- staple that thing to their damn head. Yeah. yeah well, the, the like, thing that I kind of found weird about that whole situation was like, I feel like if you did that to somebody that they would probably, I don't know, man, you, you staple, you put staples in somebody's head. Like, I don't know. That, I feel like that would, t- that would probably cause like more damage than I don't think you'd be able to walk. <laughs> like, I don't know, man, those are pretty big staples. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, they, well, they were like more yeah. bits than staples. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. They were almost like possible nails. or not. Uh, I, I have questions about that in the final, you know, thing that happens in this film, whether it's actually possible to do that to somebody. I don't know. I don't know. Well, even if I'm it's not, not like I would say another disturbing aspect to this film is when she's pulling those nails out of her head. I was like, gr- I was like kind of cringing. I was like, Ooh, like, this is kind of fucking gross. Like, and then she has, like, a big-ass, like, chain, like, m- like I guess, like, I don't know what, we, what you would call it. Like it's like a fire. belt. So she has, like, a belt around her waist that's, like, like nailed to her waist. And, well, it's it's grown into, like, her skin because it's been there. Yeah, so I know. It's just, and uh, the, just the wear and tear on like the, the body was... It's, I, like, the world's worst chastity belt right there. That's exactly what it is. The wear it's, and tear on the body, dude, I just phenomenal work. Like, j- yeah. it looks so... Sad. The body looks disgusting. It looks yeah, so the ma- sad. The makeup, like, where do you go the from this? Where do you really live good. on? Like, where do you yeah. go? Whoever yeah. did the special effects on this movie and like the the practical effects, like with the body, the, the, that that shit's like very very realistic. Like I was looking at that chick the whole time, even yeah. when they, they she put her in the bathtub, and I was like, God, that's fucked up, man. Like the cuts on her body plus the oh, I know. the chastity belt plus the head thing, the way and she looked, the, it was just <clears throat> gross. The final of the attempted cutting of the flesh man I, I i'll tell you what like i seen like hacked up wrists man <laughs> and uh yeah, it was the way just... she was like sliding the flesh off like kind of did remind me of what it almost not really looks like but it, i mean it i can imagine it, it's deep like that man it's in it and it it's wide and uh it just was like brought back flashbacks to what it really it's like the chunkiness of it too i don't know man oh and the in the, the reactions too like both by lucy and anna in this film like their acting in the film is so solid like every time so, they're reacting to a situation is like I, i'm watching them closely and i'm like man it, it just seems so realistic it's realistic yeah yeah they're, they're really lose. pulling it off well like every time because it's just non-stop right like it, it must have been an exhausting film to do but um yeah really really good 
really good stuff. Like Anna's yeah. reaction when when she's like fucking digging into her wrist. And, and like, of course, oh, I, I thought she was trying to commit suicide, but that's not the case. No, no. She was yeah. ru- and then she came out and was like rubbing against the wall. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, that which, was confusing they, too they, when it started happening. It. Yeah, yeah, they do because, explain. It. Do you know what happened, Kyle? Why she was doing yeah. that? Yeah, they said that like the the older woman in the movie said that she was um uh, well, she felt like she had insects in her skin or some shit. Yeah, and that's the result because that's the experiments that they were doing on these people, right? People reacted differently. Yeah, because you know, like like Lucy would see well that demon that she's seen. That's what she was seeing. That this girl right here would see, you know, cockroaches and insects and things like that on I her. I wish I had the actual way that they explained that line where she said like when people are you know to this point they they fear. I forget what how the line went, but it really made sense. It made a hundred percent sense. Yeah, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, but yeah, it was due to what they've endured. Yeah, what they've endured, they kind of it's a psychological thing where you just yeah. you you make connections. Yeah. And that and that's part of the experiments. It's almost like it's almost Nazi shit right there. Yeah, yeah. and you know, one of the things was uh, there, using this, humans as experiments. This yeah. um that scene totally flashed me back to in my opinion one of the scenes that disturbed me the most as a child and that was Hellraiser 2 when you see the inmate cutting his flesh because he thinks there's bugs in it. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, getting into the middle and, and almost into the third act, um, JP, I know this is your first time watch and, you know, like, what are your thoughts on, on Lucy, uh, killing herself? Uh, well, I just, I feel like she was a completely emotionally damaged person and mm-hmm. she thought, she thought that doing this would, would set her free somehow. And yeah. it was very apparent that it didn't and uh i i yeah i think she just kind of either she it's, was forced by the thing that she her delusions to do it or she yeah. kind of realized on her own there's a lot of different ways to take it you know like you know lucy's spent the last 15 years kind of probably plotting out this and she figures well you know i got them you know and i'm our, i'm fucking damaged you know i might as well just kind of end it but it's it just it's that moment in the film where you go man, Lucy, you are really, really selfish here, yeah. <laughs> you know, for a couple different reasons. Like she's supposed to be in this relationship with Anna. Plus she also leaves Anna. In I think it's a one sided relationship, dude. I really, really do. Yeah. I think that, I think that Lucy was not emotionally involved in that relationship. Like Anna was, I feel yeah, like maybe, the reason it, that the reason that is, is because when you see them in the bathroom together, when all those bodies were there Anna yeah. kisses Lucy and Lucy's kind of like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, I felt like Lucy was in a way using Anna a little bit mm-hmm. to find out this whole situation. But at the same time, I did feel like they were emotionally involved as friends. I just think Anna yeah, thought it was a little bit more than it was supposed to be. I, I just felt like they I, were I connected. They Like, they were together. They, it was, they were just a duo. They were part of each other, but it was a one-sided love re- yeah, they, relationship. Yeah, you know, they're – definitely connected through their their history and stuff like i i don't know i i kind of think that they maybe have had something but who really knows i guess well, the reason just, i say it is what it is. the reason i say they didn't it won that scene that kyle pointed out but two also just the emotional damage that mm-hmm. lucy had where she was seeing those delusions and yeah. i felt like at the end of it she succumbed to the delusions and she didn't make a conscious effort to end her life i felt like it was just that was just what was happening in her head well yeah yeah, I mean, I, I she'd probably made up in her mind that this is never going to go away, and I've I've completed you know by taking out these people that did this to me. So what's you the point? You see the of it, um right? the things slid um, her wrist for her a little bit. You know what I mean? In her head, it's, it's the thing that like she thought it would go away, but it's yeah, still there. Yeah. I mean, it, it's very much like the scene where Lucy's laying in the hallway and then uh, Anna's laying behind her and Anna looks, and then that's when you kind of you get that first glimpse of holy shit, like these demons are really doing a number on her she's just bashing her fucking head against the wall it's just it's a really kind of sad scene you know again on that emotional roller coaster you're just like that that's really sad um but you know the the first time i watched this movie which was years ago obviously and uh i just i I remember watching it going fucking lucy so selfish she just kills herself and leaves her friend there Mm -hmm. to go and deal with all this shit because right after you know lucy kills herself (laughs) you know anna's still there and then all of a sudden which i call the people yeah (laughs) Uh, well, that's they a good show up for and, them because that's what the hell they are. They're just exactly. they're like a weird religious group, I guess, or I don't know they're what the pretty, fuck they are really. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're like this really kind of weird religious cult slash influenced by Nazis. I don't know. It's really really fucking strange. Like Mademoiselle kind of looks like 
um, like, you know, that she was part of like the fourth Reich or something like that. I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of strange to me. It's kind of strange, but I overall, like basically they, they pretty much just capture her and then they, they put her on a chair and they're like, look at these people. Do you notice something about them? Look at their eyes. Like these people are still alive in these photos, although they are, as you can see, they look like they should be dead. And something that we believe is that, you know, it has to do with the, you know, the martyr thing, right? It's the, yeah. it's once you're pushed beyond, uh, I, I, the, the core concept there is that there's the, it's the afterlife. That, that's the core concept behind well, it. They're, yeah, they're trying to push people to the absolute limit, a limit. You know, they're still alive, but they can still see the other side. See the other side, see the, see after death, basically. Yeah, they can see exactly. even though they're still alive. Because theoretically, in the way, you know, religion works is that you're not really supposed to see the other side unless you're dead. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So they're trying to push it because what they're trying to accomplish is that they want to push these people to the point where they're still alive, they see the other side, and that's why they, they want to know, they, they want to know for sure. They want that, that martyr in this case to report and say, Hey, mm-hmm. there actually is another side. You guys did your job. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the way that they there do this is punish. They, 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 they start by yep. just feeding them this awful stuff. And you can see the deterioration of the character as like that first they're spitting it out. They're spitting it out. They're not down with this. And eventually yep. they just kind of give up and, you know, Anna Ian does. Moods, she does fast actually, and I thought it was very yeah. represent representative of her character. I have a theory on that too. The reason why she does it because it's like, I mean, obviously she wouldn't know if she's going to get to the point and see the other side, but she does give up. And I think it's honestly, I think, in my opinion, the director set this up purposely because of that the end scene in the film where Anna whispers something to Mademoiselle, and. So you think that it was intentional? I think it was intentional. Because huh. I think it was a setup because I, I've watched this and I've examined See, I take so the ending time. differently though. Yeah, but I – OK. Um, well, I mean if we want to get to there, you guys want to give your theories yeah. on the end? So, OK. Well, I'll give, I'll give my theory read here. OK. So the rest of the film basically is the people – uh, torturing the shit out of Anna, which and is what brutal, they're... by the way. It's a lot of beating, and I, I found that that was skinning. It's a lot of very realistic beat. It just looks real. Yeah, like, it's really, really fucking. Dude ass knocks her, her out, down. picks her up, knocks her out again, and it just looks so real. Like it doesn't look like fake movie punches. You, you pretty much get the idea of what happened to Good Lucy sound in the beginning too. of the film too. Yeah, yeah. So. and the, honestly, dude, the swelling, the black and blue, it is some of the best that I've ever seen. I watch a lot of MMA, right? I know what this stuff looks like. And I was pretty impressed with, with the eye swelling and the uh, purple colors and just the, the cuts. They all looked real to me. Yeah, yeah. So so anyways, I think at one point Anna's decided, well, you know, she's given up basically. And she's she's almost devising a plan here. You know, she figures that if she does get to the point because she it's been explained to her what they're trying to accomplish, she knows that, you know, if she sees the other side, she is going to basically tell Mademoiselle that it doesn't exist because it's the ultimate revenge because she knows the fucking truth, you know, and that's ultimately what happens here. You know, Anna gets to the point, sees this kind of white light and then. You know, you see Anna whispering something to Mademoiselle in the end of the film. You don't know what she says. Mm -hmm. See, that's where I think that that theory becomes problematic because if it was just that, then they would have said it. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I think it works so well because it's like what is she 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 made Mademoiselle kill herself. Yeah, but I'm saying if but if they if she if that's what she told her if she said that there's nothing and yeah. she and she killed herself then i feel like that that it, it's, it's that a, they would have said a plan they, for... they would have said it's it's they would have had her say that so problem. i'll say this no I'll i don't think it. so i honestly think it was the ultimate revenge because she's been tortured this whole time she needs a little bit of she needs to get back at them somehow she sees the other side she confirms it she tells mademoiselle there's nothing there mademoiselle had already made up her mind that this was the one this the, Anna was the one. She's yeah. definitely going to see it. They they brought in people, blah blah blah. And by telling her that there was nothing there, it was such a huge letdown for Mademoiselle. She fucking kills herself, man. She can't deal with it. She's like, this is crazy. I had 
hundred percent in my mind that Anna, this, what we'd done, it was perfectly hundred percent. Like it worked. It worked. We made Anna so see why, the other side. She's still alive. She reported back. Why to do me. you think she like, didn't see the other side then? Right. Unless there is nothing in that case, then she saw nothing. Mm-hmm. So in that case, then it was that she didn't devise the plan that it just was the end outcome. So what, why is it? Do you think that she, that she didn't? see any that if they're so sure that like this is to the point they've done this experiment a m- bunch of times like it this is to the point like why how, why do you think that it is that that it didn't happen to her because she looked pretty fucked to me what do you mean like anna looked fucked yeah like she because there's a scene where it says like you, you just think stopped, that she didn't see you just stop wait but are you saying she did see or she didn't see anything she probably did and lied to her is what that's Bruce is that's probably what I thought he was saying. But I'm that's what I'm, I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I think she didn't get to that point that they thought she did. No, I'm saying that she did. And, and I there think was that's... nothing or she just told her nothing. No, that there was but... that Anna truly believed that she saw the other side. But in her mind, she's like, well, you know, I'm not going to let her know. I'm not going to give her the satisfaction of torturing me that's for however long this ask. was. Yeah, and this is what I'm saying. She's not going to give Mademoiselle and the rest of the people the satisfaction of telling her, yeah, there's the other side. I'm not going to be that martyr. Fuck you. I am not I'm not doing this for yeah. you. So she tells her, I didn't see anything, knowing the truth that she did. And ultimately, I'm not saying Anna knew that Mademoiselle was going to fucking kill herself because she had her mind made up. Mademoiselle yeah. was like, hey, this is but the it's, one. It's like the final fuck you. Like, I know and I'm not telling you. Exactly. And that was the only thing that Anna could do because she knew she was going to die. Yeah. She yeah, couldn't okay. do anything. She I'm, could I'm, never get that, revenge. That's not too bad of a thing. Like, that's probably might be what the director intended. My thing I just hope it is. From, I hope it is. I hope it is because I have thought about this very deeply. Well, yeah. I, and I, <laughs> yeah. I would considered that too. But my thing was that there's a scene early on where, uh, you know, when she's first going through the torturing, torturing and she's kind of at the you know, kind of on the edge and, and she has like a vision where she says, basically you just give up and stop feeling that. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what happened. And I felt like there was nothing to showcase her character as being a strong character to this point. Like, I just thought she was a weak character and she, that she just came to it. That's it. That you can only take so much. And it didn't really ever look at her as that she's this master genius to, to come up with this plan. But I, I guess, think that's, I guess that could work too. I honestly truly believe I think that's what makes the ending so damn powerful is because th- that's why the director shows her giving up. He literally shows her eating food. She's just giving up. She's like, yeah, whatever. Okay. But that, I and saw I think, it as I think, I think he had this worse way. I saw it as powerful uh, as like, as yeah, nobody I, I, can really take that. And, and it's I, sad. It's powerful because it's sad. Yeah. She didn't make it. There's nothing that she can yeah. do. They skinned yeah. her alive. She's, and by the end of it, I thought that whatever she told, I thought that the, the, the experiment was a su- success, first of all. She did reach that martyr level where she saw beyond. And I just thought that whatever yep. she told her, either she couldn't wait to experience it herself, so she killed herself, or she just thought that it was nothing – it was just a disappointment and she killed herself. Well, the reason why – Madam was – the reason why I think like my theory works is because killing yourself is a sin. And, you know, in the eyes of God, it's not but really that it, good, man. Just, not good, yeah. They, they don't ever yeah. say God or Jesus Christ or any of that. No. They just they, – they want to know what's beyond. Exactly. But, I mean, I mean, I guess that's something you do assume, I guess. You know, maybe they're just – I don't know. Who who really knows? I mean, it's it's all up to just opinion and, you know, whatever. I'm pretty sure they're, skinning you're right, somebody they're... alive is pretty much a sin as well. I'm just saying. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, but that but that's the interesting thing that this movie showcases is that they're willing to do – right on this though. I, I, think I think these religious are... people – But, you know, but this is, downer. this is how – I like how to think that she's – just amazing this film really is is because he does showcase the true nature of religious fanatics man she, they they contradict themselves the true they, essence of martyr like what a martyr is yeah, and I yeah. love that and i mean these true fanatics and these calls they, they're theoretically hypocrites oh yeah you know they contradict these themselves extremes, to death yes. i mean they're willing to do all these bad things but you know like you know they can't do this one sin or else they won't get into heaven you know things like that right and i think that's kind of what he's showcasing here um, yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I've just, I think this movie is just beyond powerful. And I, I think it's really interesting. Um, 
you know, di- the different views on, on how to interpret the ending. I, but I think at the end, we I, still come to know, the same conclusion that, that mm-hmm. Mademoiselle killed herself based on a disappointment factor. But I just saw it as like that she couldn't possibly withstand this because she, there's nothing that I'm seeing out of her character that would suggest that she could. So that mm-hmm. I, I don't, I maybe I just, I, I might be on so, a pessimistic where I, I, I kind of just assumed that it was like a downer ending. But, yeah. Well, for sure, dude. The first time I watched the movie, I didn't really know what to think, and I kept thinking to myself, "I'm like, did she, did she just fucking?" I didn't really know. I kind I, of I understood it I, pretty. I, I, I honestly couldn't devise a proper opinion. You know, when I first watched, I didn't really even get it. Like, I was like, uh, "Okay, yeah." Like, you know, just fun. kind of that night. I'm just like, "Okay," but yeah. um, it, it is interesting the... when you watch it because I actually picked up on a couple more things watching it this time around. Like I said, I, I hadn't seen it lot, in five years. Dude. I feel like I got the most of the gist of it the first viewing. It was so weird because yeah. I don't know. What was you going to say, Kyle? No, I was going to say, no, that's that's where the directing style of this movie, the actual like, like directorial, I guess, like approach to this movie is like very interesting is the ending because it's like it can leave a lot up to interp- uh, interpretation. It's like when I first watched this movie, the first couple of times I watched this movie – I didn't really take Moods' idea into aspect as much as I am kind of now because when I first watched uh, – the first two times, maybe one or two times I watched this movie, I was like, she killed herself to go to the other side. I didn't really think about the fact that, hey, you know, maybe religion-wise, you know, you're not really supposed to kill yourself. That's looked on as a sin. But – the more I think about it, you know, the more he kind of explained it just now, it makes a little bit more sense that, you know, she she pretty much lied to Mademoiselle and said, hey, you know, there's nothing on the other side, which pretty much brings her entire existence to a crumble, to nothing, because mm-hmm. that's pretty much what she's going for is I got to find out what's on the other side. And, you know, there's nothing there. So fuck it. I'm going to kill myself. Why am I going to live anymore? Yeah. It's so perfect, though. Well, it's let, so let me perfect ask you because this, Anna, has no, Anna has nothing to lose at that moment. You know, she's yeah. just like, I might as well just fucking My lie. only <laughs> complaint with that that idea is they tell us how extreme these things are. They explain what it is to go as far beyond as possible. What is indicative of that character to show that you you that she was capable of doing something that was thought impossible? That was my only problem. That's why I thought she just succumbed to the normal beatings and you can't take it anymore life of people mm-hmm. yeah i don't i don't know i don't know like she didn't seem like yeah, an overly right. strong female character not even female it doesn't matter but they did mention that females has something to do with this by the way which i thought was interesting because they do say mm-hmm. that, that it seems like females are more able to do this than males i think what it comes to is that she just didn't want to give into their cause i understand you know, that but just... um like the way that they explained it, the Mademoiselle and all them, like they explained it mm-hmm. as if it was like, it's it's like no human can just like you can't just do it. You either have that m- martyr thing or or whatever. I I don't know. It's it's an interesting concept. It really is, and I, I did find well, it very. <laughs> well, put it this way: Episode one point five of uh, the podcast, <laughs> um, going to be an interview with Pascal Laguerre. Laguerre Does anybody know French? Sells... <laughs> uh, no, Canadian, not a lick. What the hell? That that doesn't matter, <laughs> dude. You're Mexican, you don't know Spanish. Come on. Well, that, yeah, that's because I, I'm like a failure at being Mexican. But <laughs> but no, I mean, great theories. I I, I truly love. I think you are. I think that was what the director's intent was. I just you know the mm. the thing being her character. I kind of um, was just pulling something different. But I'm pretty sure you're correct. You're probably hitting yes. it spot on. Um, I, I mean, I I, tr- I hope I, I am. I really because, believe you are. Yeah, and I mean yeah. that 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 ending makes a lot it's more so, sense. Than, it's so powerful, it's, though, right? It's just yeah. like it's, it's such just a revenge. Showing, ending. It, it is. I know, and it's so crazy. Like this whole movie is such an emotional roller coaster. It's just it's versatile. It's just so. Oh, like this I said, movie so is like, this movie is like very in your face, unforgiving never, in, in your face. It's so <laughs> good. It never stops. It never stops. Right from the opening scene, you see a, a young person running out of a building. You're like, what yeah. the fuck? That's not cool. To you, 
it never stops. You know what? People, right to the very last I've heard scene. people describe this film as like, oh, it's super good. The violence is very brutal and uh, disturbing, but it has a lot of plot holes and doesn't really make sense. And I really didn't see that in this. I, I felt like it didn't have no. really a lot of plot holes, I, and it did kind of make it sense. Does, it doesn't if you watch it and kind of dissect it like we are, because when I first watched this movie, I, it took me a few times to watch it to understand the complete, you know, the whole tenacity of the actual film, because I watched it the first time. If you go into this movie, I know you probably got it a little bit more, well, JP. I, I'm I'm also when watching it with did, a critical eye. I know that I'm going to be talking about it on the podcast. Um, yeah, I watched when, I, when I first watched it, I was in 10th grade and had no idea what the fuck was going yeah, on. Were, or um, I was in high school and didn't know what the fuck was going on with it. So Yeah, I wasn't like that lost. I was just, you know, really trying to figure but out. You probably wasn't more. watching it in terms to review it either, though, right, Moats? No, I think no, definitely, definitely not. Definitely not. Factors in. No, it, it, it's a big factor. You know, like, you know, when I watch films for fun, sometimes, you know, Does that I'm even either anymore. <laughs> Cause it barely no, no, happens I do. with me. <laughs> I do. I do. I mean, you know, generally I'm watching cheesy action films or yeah. something. I don't know, but you know what I'm saying? Like, um, I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember what I was getting at there. <laughs> well, either way, I, I think I think that it's I got sidetracked. It's about time to kind of uh, get into the final segments here. I, w- should we do our ratings first, or is it disturbing first? Which which one do you want to do first? I'd say we go ahead and rate okay. it, dude. So, one other question. I, I, this is kind of like off topic ish, but is these like Hall of like is these are like twenty two shots presents stuff? Is this does this count for Hall of Fame stuff or now? Well, I mean, I mean, it's up to you, man. I mean, you're the one that puts in the work on the well, website. It doesn't, so. It's not really any extra work. I would say okay, yes, I'm considering down. Kyle is kind of the, you know, unofficial He's third like member sister. of of the, uh, I'm the you know, sister. Of, of the big brother of the big brother. So um, <laughs> I'm the bastard brother. <laughs> The bastard, yeah. brother, and the whole yeah. point of the Hall of Fame is to let people know that these are the like best films. So like, why wouldn't we want to put it there? You know, if it if it made it, you know, I'm not saying it is, but for future, exactly. All right, so yeah, my would start off with a rating, bro. Okay, um, well, I mean, I, I, I've said a lot <laughs> about this film. Um, yeah, I mean. I, I can't really add a whole lot more to it. You know, I just the, the thing about this movie that I love is that it's just it's so punishing you know it's it's an emotional it's an emotional roller coaster you know it's exhausting it's mentally physically you know mentally punishing when you watch this movie and i get a lot out of it man it it just keeps you so geared and you just want to know um about i described this movie a lot a uh, couple years back as being psychologically empowering and what i mean by that is it, this is the type of movie that is why I love movies because it really does make me and it encourages myself to start thinking in a higher degree. You know, you got to look at things and you got to figure it out in the end. And, you know, I mean, because some people might think the ending is a little ambiguous or whatever, who knows, but you know, I I truly believe it isn't. I think there is a, a valid reason for what happened. I did explain it, but, um, but yeah, psychologically empowering. And this is like the idealistic film for myself. I, I think there's really not a lot wrong with this. You know, the, uh, the, the realistic and brutal violence in this film is unapologetic just, violence. It's so unapologetic and it's so dark and it's just brutal. And this one pulls no punches. Like there's absolutely no comedic elements to this movie whatsoever. It's raw. It's gritty. It's just in your face and it just keeps coming. It's, you know, it, it never stops. Like I said, from the opening scene right to the very last scene, it's just, it's an amazing film. It runs hundred minutes, but it doesn't feel like it's a hundred minutes. It's just, you know, theoretically it doesn't. I mean, like I said, it, it's, you know, it's, 20 minutes left. I'm like, how are they going to wrap this up? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, <laughs> I know, I know. Right. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's just, um, it's a modern day classic. Uh, it's a masterpiece. And, you know, I, I think this movie just needs to be, um, you know, not only put into that disturbing, uh, you know, realm of films and stuff, but needs to be put into, you know, the whole awesome films realm. You know, this isn't just a disturbing piece of cinema. It, it really does work on all levels. 10 out of 10. Very well said, my friend, uh, Kyle. 
that's that's gonna be hard to follow because <laughs> he pretty much I mean he pretty much said pretty much everything I was thinking about this movie and one of the uh, episodes of the Twenty Two Shots podcast I I guessed on with you guys we were talking about the Martyrs remake and I I did say I had a lot to say about this film um, I I feel pretty much the exact same way Moods does about it. I feel like it's pretty much, like you said, JP, it's unapologetic. I mean, extremely, extremely graphic. Um, it does uh, pr- it does you know, pretty much set a point uh, about the movie, about things, uh, as far as, uh, you know, as far as the actual, the theme of the actual film goes. Um, I do feel like this movie kind of set in motion uh, a lot of the, the newer extreme films that have been coming out. Uh, you know, you got a Serbian film that came out a few years, a few years after this. Um, and, and as far as the actual film itself goes, dude, it, dude, there's so many visually like disturbing and, and, uh, like, it makes you just feel on edge. Like any movie that makes me feel on edge and a- anxious gives me anxiety. That movie is hitting, it's hitting home, it's hitting, <laughs> it's proving a point. Uh, it's making me feel as a cinema goer, as a film, uh, watcher, I'm like, wow, like, this is actually hitting me where it hurts. Like, I love shit like this. And another aspect of this film that I really, really, uh, can compare to one of my favorite directors, uh, Takashi Mike, is I had to watch this movie a couple of times to actually completely understand this film, which is pretty much every Mike film I watch. <laughs> I have yeah, to watch pretty- like, Two even, or three times. Even, even his fucking action films are so confusing. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is going on with this plot? And like, this yeah. was one of those movies. It wasn't as bad as a Mike film as far as like understanding yeah. wise, but it was up there. Like, I had to like really think. And any movie that makes me really think, I, I really feel like that movie is, uh, you know, it, it's a movie that I will revisit for one, and it, it always is going to hold a special place in, you know, in my heart. I'll always remember that movie. Uh, even some of Mike's films where they're just weird as fuck, and I don't even know if I'm going to revisit it. I'll always remember those movies as being a movie that made me think and uh, kept me on my toes throughout the whole movie. It did not bore me. Uh, it made me, after the movie it got over, I was continuing to think about the plot, um, and... I, I do feel like this – I'm there with moods. It's a modern masterpiece. I feel like this film uh, – it's one of those films when I first saw it, I was like, I'm going to suggest this movie to as many people as possible because this movie – you know, you go from the shotgun scene to the ending scene where the chick is uh, – you know, she's on skinned on this table uh, with all these people watching her and listening Full to her. It's just a really, it really <laughs> it's is, man. It's, 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 this movie is not only like mentally – <laughs> fucked it, it's visually fucked and uh that sounds weird but it, it's a very memorable movie so i i agree i actually gave this movie a 10 out of 10 before you know anything i've always thought this movie was a perfect movie so yeah 10 out of 10 definitely okay um i don't know how to follow up both of those but essentially i came in at a 9.5 but I, I gotta be honest like you guys talked it up like what as we before we started this podcast i wrote down 9.5 and as we discussed it i realized that there there truly is very little wrong with this film uh maybe the believability factor but if you put yourself in the story if you accept the story then then it's not it's not like it maybe the idea that these people couldn't do this in a regular neighborhood how hasn't the cops came already where's the bodies going how how are they not going to be missing maybe that's a plot hole i don't know Mm -hmm. um but it it, it is when we use the word classic and and modern day masterpiece and modern day classic and, and things i think of like what qualifies and i really do on every level, this film is interesting from the cinematic point of view, just the the, the, the camera work and uh, we talked about the elevation with the, the makeup and just the chap lips and, and stuff like that. But honestly, it's a story that makes you think and it's good filmmaking. And what do I always say? It's a, I say my number one favorite thing in in movies why i do this is because i love good filmmaking and that's my favorite thing yeah and this is i don't think yeah. anybody could say that this is not good filmmaking and it's honestly depressing that the guy hasn't really done anything else um because yeah. if he this was he pulled i mean jesus christ dude like this this is an amazing movie so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm, I'm gonna bump my rating up to where you guys are to hit a perfect 30 that is a 10 out of 10 and this film will be inducted into the 22 shots presents slash moods and horror hall of fame as a 10 from moods a 10 out of 10 for me and a 10 out of 10 from kyle for the perfect 30 
I what's, think what's that's... funny? What's funny is I actually came into this thinking that I was going to get shit for giving this movie a ten out of ten. <laughs> I was like, these guys are going to rip apart this movie, and I'm going to be sitting here like, oh, why did I give this? A He's going to be racing his rating and shit while we're yeah, talking. Like I, I've always thought this movie was an amazing like feat of cinema for the time frame that it came out in. I mean, there wasn't really much going on in 2008, and then this movie comes out and it's like kind of blows you away on the like disturbing slash horror genre, and you're like, wow, it just is like. Just kind of crazy. So this is why this is the perfect reason why you know revisiting films is such a good idea. Like I said, I hadn't seen this one in like five years at least, and I remember someone asking me what my ranking was on the, you know the Fab Five films, and I, I remember putting Martyrs in at third on that list. You know, and, and I hadn't seen it in a while. You know. Yeah. So this is a perfect example of why you do it because just revisiting, I'm just like, holy, just, I just like, watching this movie with a different mentality and I'm just really, you know, just examining things to, to a, you know, higher degree. And it's just, it, everything comes together. I, this will, is what, I will say you this, Boots, you, you examined the ending of this movie a lot more than I thought I would. And when you started kind of talking about your, your interpretation of the ending of this movie, like I never really thought of that. It just all made sense like, all of a sudden. Made sense to yeah, me a lot yeah. more hearing what you thought about it than to what I was kind of interpreting it. Cause I was interpreting as, you know, she heard what the ending, you know, what the other side was. She killed herself and that's where she wanted to go. But the more you kind of broke it down, it makes more sense of what you'd interpreted it as, as, as yeah, I did. Yeah. And so. you know what, Kyle? Yeah, I, you, and you didn't want him on the podcast. Jeez. <laughs> no, I never <laughs> said that. <laughs> you did nobody wants to be on their show um no but seriously i watched this movie late last night before i went to bed and i i got thinking about it. i was just like laying there thinking about it and stuff and got up in the morning went to the gym and i was running on the uh, elliptical and i was thinking about this and and i just everything was just really really flowing i don't know just because you know i was working out and things were just kind of flowing and stuff but i was just having these crazy ideas and things and and I'm but like, that's yep. the film, right? That's the film. That's yep. what makes any film that you could be thinking about at the gym the next day. The next day those are the ones day. that I love, and this is why I do this. This is what I love. It's not like going to see Jurassic World in the movie it's theater, so and you're not you're not thinking about dinosaurs <laughs> yeah. the next fucking day. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> Jesus Christ! But there but, is room uh, for that in cinema too. Let's not let's not front that there's not room for that type of stuff. You know, but well, yeah, these ones but, are my. I favorite. mean. This is a little bit different of a you know, of a genre slash film as you know. This is one of those movies that really, really get into you. I mean, not only like like I said, visually, you're going to remember these like gore scenes and these scenes where these dudes are being. This whole family at the beginning, the first 15 minutes of the movie, gets blown away by a shotgun. That's not something you see every day in a film. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. that's few and far between. In you know what, movies. <laughs> you know what I've seen like about five or six times today was the little girl's eyes just open. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just kept picturing it. It sticks with you, man. It's you depressing. Know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the, the final thing that we're going to end here on is, uh, and I, I think that in this case, we actually discussed a lot of, of what made it disturbing or what didn't make it disturbing. So instead of saying, you know, why, I think we already explained why. So I'm just going to leave it on this guys. The definition that I got is causing distress, worry, or ex- anxiety. Is Martyrs disturbing? Yes or no? Moods. Yes. Kyle. Yes. Yes. All three of those I experienced. Yeah. I mean, I I I, I started getting the first. I remember uh, just a quick little thing here. I remember the first time, like I said, I saw this movie. Uh, seeing the visual aspect of this movie, not only just the plot, but you know, you, you see the, the kind of breaking it down. Yeah, you go from seeing this little girl being tortured to her killing an entire family to her, uh, you know, going and there's just you know, a laundry list right? there's just a long <laughs> list of like just visual things and that could by itself even though the plot's disturbing could be why it is disturbing i've always thought this movie was definitely should be up there on the disturbing list if if you you know an extreme list of because you see it on every single extreme list and it is meant to be there so that's i do agree with a lot of the people that say this so yes yeah and, uh any final words gentlemen um, I mean, for me, I guess just, I guess check out all of our YouTube channels. I mean, you got Mood 616, uh, I'm the Horrorphile, Double Shot J, uh, we upload reviews and a whole bunch of other stuff to our channels. 
Um, I'm, <laughs> I was gonna say I'm, I'm the I'm the Lone Ranger left on body bags. I didn't I didn't plug that at the beginning of the uh, oh yeah <laughs> of the of the show, but um yeah, there's another YouTube channel called Body Bags. I'm <laughs> like I said, the Lone Ranger left. These two have left, uh, but you know you can catch me on there also. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, guys, take it from me where I say check. If if, you, if, for, if for some reason you don't know who Mood Six One Six is, like that's pretty crazy. But like the guy makes some of the best videos on YouTube, and, and you know Kyle, he's not good, but he's very nice. So <laughs> I mean, <laughs> check out his videos as well. Um, you know, I I think that this first show was was a success, and and what we're gonna do next is still kind of up in the air. This this is like the first episode. Um, it's literally a pilot. It, it's a pilot. So if you guys want more, I want to hear it loud. Seriously. Yeah. Because we won't do Give more unless reasons. you don't. Holla at a player. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let us know if you like this format, if you like the questions we pose, and if you like the questions we answer, if you like the way we answer it, the way we talk about the movie. Let us know. That's important to us. Yeah, and like yeah. something else Very I was thinking too. I know that you guys do uh, voicemails on the Twenty Two Shots uh, podcast, and I'm not saying. I mean, I know this is a pilot, but if you guys ever have any questions or anything, leave us some comments in the you know comment section. Maybe on you know when we get our iTunes feed, we'll be uploading this to our YouTube channel. Leave us some uh, questions in the comment section if you guys have any questions about anything about the movie or anything about any of these extreme uh, disturbing movies in general. Just let us know. Uh, we'd be more than happy to answer some questions on the podcast for you guys as well. So, yep. And yep, with, for with sure. that said, I was disturbed, and uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to being disturbed again if we come back and when if that happens. So, <laughs> yeah. awesome, awesome so, doing this with you guys. I, I, it was yeah, so fun. Great I had, show. I, I had great so show. much fun with this one. I really did. So, uh, see, see you guys later. Peace. Till next time. Peace. <laughs>